Our Gospel is from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. These are some of my favorite words that Jesus has to say. And I want you to remember those two houseplants, the one that doesn't look so good and the new one. I am the true vine, Jesus says, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, Jesus says, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And then this, this is my favorite part. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you my servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Hey, welcome, Scouts. It's great to have you here. We've got a ton of room around the edges. And then we have a bunch of room, believe it or not, in the front three pews. I don't know how that happens. But come on in. Casey, you're like a ringleader. You can lead the troops. It's good to see you guys. How was your camp out? Fun, fun, fun. Come on, I've been in a room with boys, and you make more noise than this generally. All right, appreciate the respect, the quiet. And you're sleepy. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. I hope you can all stick around for our potluck. We have a lot of extra food that we brought. Wow, you look really tired. <laughs> we were hoping on you to liven up the troops. Well, good morning, good morning. It's good to have you here, and it's good to see the rest of everybody, too. We're glad that you're here, and God has some good things in store for us today, um, as always, because that's who God is. Welcome, and you are the luckiest ones, because you're in the very front row at church. I love that. <laughs> Truly welcome. Good to have you guys here. So, um, not long ago, I heard the story about a family of three. And at the time, they had uh, maybe a four-year-old, maybe a, a five-year-old, and they were at a, like a family, um, a small resort kind of place. And their, their child was pretty precocious and loved to talk to kids. Just one of those kids who always makes a friend wherever she went. You know the type? There's yeah. <laughs> one family in here that's really, really not in their heads. <laughs> um, and you've met their daughter. Um, but anyway, so, so that kind of girl. And she went off and, and she met a child and um, there, was a, there was a larger pool and there was a small pool, a, a little children's pool. And the family watched their child go to the small pool and she made a little friend who was just a little bit older than her and the child didn't have eyes. She wasn't blind. 
but she just, she didn't have eyes. And they were just watching, they were kind of wondering, you know, how, how is this going to go? And their little four or five year old didn't seem to notice that the girl didn't have eyes, but they just played, and they just, yeah, wait, being kids. And um, it was fascinating for the mom and the dad of this little girl to watch. I thought it was beautiful. And they went and they got in a little kiddie pool, and then some other people came and they got in the pool, and then some, some parents sat around the side of that pool, and the mom and dad, since, since they were getting in the water, went to get closer to the pool, and they just watched, but they didn't want their daughter to know that they were there, so they kind of sat back a little privately and watched. And one of the dads said to this little girl who'd made the friend, who didn't have any eyes, one of the other dads said to the girl, what's the matter with your friend? And the girl looked at the, the girl who didn't have any eyes. And she looked at her and she kind of checked her out, up and down. She looked at that man. Nothing's wrong with her. And they went about playing. Which I think is just a really cool story. Because, you know, nothing was wrong with her. She was just a girl. She was playing in the pool. And there was nothing wrong. Jesus says that he's the vine and we're the branches. Or as I hope you might remember it, he's the vine and we're the branches. And that we're rooted in him. And that he has the love. And that the life that we get to have branches out from him. Because, you know, it can be hard to love in this world. And if you've ever been stuck in traffic, you might know that. And if you've ever sat in a meeting that has gone on at least four times as long as it should, you know that. And if you've ever gone to a family reunion, you might know that. We live in a world where it can be hard to love. But we don't have to count on our own love. We don't have to count on our own resources. We're rooted in one who is bigger than us. We're rooted in Jesus. Who's connected to God our Father. Who has eternal, abundant, everlasting love. And if our lives are rooted in him, then we can draw on that love. That's an account that never gets overdrawn, where we never get a notice from the bank saying, oh, you did it again, and there's a fee for that. We get to count on that love. He's the vine, or the branches. And before you know it, we look a little bit like the cross, where love is abundant. Jesus says, abide in my love. Let me be the Lord of your life. So you don't have to put your ultimate trust in your job or in your bank account or in the car in your garage or even in your key ring. And yeah, it can be frustrating to lose those keys or to be locked away from them. It can be frustrating to feel like you're out of options. But Jesus says you can trust in me. You can hang on to me. And I'm always going to have plenty for you. I'm always going to have plenty for you. I got to, years ago, I got to go to South Africa. It was a fantastic trip. And I got to tour a winery and vineyard. And it was really cool. I learned something there. The, the grapes that were growing on vines looked a lot like the, the vineyards that I have gotten to walk around here in Virginia, um, as well as ones in um, Napa Valley. But I got a tour of that vineyard where the, the vintner, the man who grows these grape vines, um, talked to our group about the terroir. Aren't I fancy? Um, <laughs> which is basically the dirt. <laughs> and now we're talking my language. Uh, the dirt that these grapes grow out of. He picked up a bunch of the, of the dirt. 
and he said, the, the dirt here is different than it is anywhere in the world. This is the terroir. This is what makes our grapes taste the way that they do. And because our grapes taste the way that they do, our wine tastes different than it does anywhere in the world. And that's why wine from region to region to region tastes different. Now, I find the Trader Joe's wine that costs $2.99 all tastes the same. Uh, but the terroir or the dirt makes it taste different because it's grounded differently. Well, if we're grounded in Christ, if we're grounded in the lessons he teaches about unconditional love, then that would mean our lives, our branches, have a different flavor, have a different taste, have a different texture than maybe other people's in the world. <laughs> there was something that was really cool in the early church. When Christianity was first formed, first founded, there would be small groups of communities of Christians. Christians were persecuted at that time. They couldn't have big buildings on hills with steeples, and everybody would say, hey, there's a church, there's a church, there's a church. But these communities would just meet in people's homes, and they had secret signs. They had the sign of the fish, and people would know if there was a sign of a fish on a home or something, and that those, oh, Christians are here. But those would be the, the visible markets that the more important way that people would know that, Christ, that a person was a Christian or that a community of people was Christian is because they loved one another. They would truly say, oh, look at those Christians. Look at those people. Look at how they love one another. And it was so different than what people usually saw as they went around. They would say, look at how they love one another. Kind of like that little girl at the pool. What's wrong with your friend? Nothing. Look at how she loved her. I imagine that girl with the eyes has gone through much of her life now. With a lot of people thinking something's wrong with her. But someone who is very young told a stranger, no, nothing's wrong with her. <coughs> Nothing. When that horrible tragedy happened in Newtown, Connecticut, a lot of the news reports said that there were 26 victims. Yeah, 26 people were shot in the elementary school. Horrible tragedy. Please don't hear me say that that's not horrible. It makes me cry whenever I think about it. But I believe there were 28 victims because the assassin's mother was also shot. And then he killed himself. And nobody in their right mind would do what he did. And so I consider him a victim too. And in Boston, there's a big controversy going on in the community. The funeral director's having a hard time finding a cemetery where the bomber will accept this corpse to be buried. People are picketing a funeral home where his body is. I don't know how that story is going to end, but the funeral director is saying, he's not a terrorist, he's a dead body. And everybody deserves to be buried with some kind of dignity. I want people to look at us as River of Grace and say, look how they love one another. Look how they love the world. Look at the love that they have. I want us to be marked as different. I want people to say, look at the love in their hearts. Why do we go to church? So that we can join with Christ in striving for justice and peace in all the earth. It's one of the, one of the promises that Olivia, our own Olivia, is going to make in her confirmation today. Yes, she's going to be confirmed. And by the way, that little four or five-year-old girl who was playing with another child who didn't have any eyes, that was Olivia nine or ten years ago. Her mom told me that story. 
said it was one of her hallmark favorite stories about Olivia. You probably can't see them. No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> give, give her a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Confirmation is a time in a teenager's life and sometimes an adult's life when they stand up and they say, yes, I want to say yes to a walk of faith. In the Lutheran Church and in a lot of Christian <coughs> denominations, we baptize people as young as babies, just itty bitty ones. And the reason we do that is because we can be pretty sure that a baby doesn't earn or deserve God's love. I mean, we've got some babies in the room. They cry a lot, they make some poopy diapers, they don't really have the catechism memorized, and they haven't really done a lot of community service work, right? Has Emily done a lot of community service work? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but she's going to be baptized here pretty soon. And your kids are going to be baptized next week. Pretty cool. Um, we baptize because God loves us. It's not because we've proved to God that we're worthy of it. We baptize without a lot of information shoved into our brains yet. We baptize because God says yes to us, but then when someone's confirmed, we say yes to God. We say, yes, I want to take seriously this walk of faith. I want to take seriously. I, I know I'm not perfect, I'm not ever going to be perfect, but I do want to walk in faith. And so today, Olivia is making her confirmation. She's done a couple years of study at another congregation, and then she came to us after her years of study, but before her actual confirmation. So she's going to affirm her faith today. She's going to draw on Jesus' love in her life so she can leave these branches and take on the shape of the cross in her life. And that's what we do here every week. We draw on the love of Christ so that we can branch out and share that love with one another. I had the privilege um, in a hospital corridor this week to meet Saleh back there um, with a little itty bitty baby in a stroller. And uh, as she rolled past me, there was a Coke can sitting on her baby. And I admired the baby, and she said, Well, the Coke's not the baby, the Coke, the baby's, the Coke belongs to me. I have triplets and I haven't slept for a year. <laughs> and I said, well, my goodness, do you have a church? Because you probably need a church. <laughs> um, anyway, it's fantastic to see you guys here today. Thank you for being here. Because you know it's hard to do life on your own, with or without triplets. But it sure is cool to have triplets in the room. <laughs> but don't we all need to draw on love? And don't we all need to pass out love in the world? That's what we're up to. That's what we want to be. And I'm guessing, without knowing what every one of you has been through this week, there have been a few moments where you needed to draw on some love. And maybe you had a friend that you called, or a memory that you called up, or a prayer that you said, or a book that you went to, or a Bible passage. But you had a resource, you had a plan, you had some hope. And if you didn't, I'm especially glad that you're here. Because we're a river of grace. We're a place of hope. We're a place of love. And that's what we always want to be for one another and for the world. Jesus says, I have come to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. Amen.